On the morning of November 28th, 2020, it was relatively quiet in the scenic Butte Inlet. It was 6.53 a.m. and due to the time of year, only a faint glow was visible on the horizon as the sun would rise 70 minutes later. Suddenly, a large roar became audible as a section of a mountainside east of Incisor Peak collapsed all at once in a massive landslide. Moving at a speed of 160 kilometers an hour, the 18 million cubic meters of rock only took 11 seconds for this landslide to strike the northern end of Elliott Lake. Quickly displacing large volumes of water, the cold lake water lurched upwards, forming a towering wave. A mega tsunami had just been generated, which peaked in height at 107 meters or 350 feet and seemingly towered over every tree in the vicinity. As this massive wave advanced further from its source, it struck down large swaths of coniferous trees that lined the valley walls, sweeping them away by the thousands. 56 seconds later, the tsunami reached the natural outlet of the lake and breached a section of a higher natural dam that water flowed over. This released large sections of the lake, creating a voluminous outburst flood which advanced simultaneously with the tsunami wave which flowed down the slope. As additional vegetation was stripped clean away, the dense sediment carried in the Elmhurst Flood quickly carved away at the bottom of Elliott Creek, scouring it, making it 5 to 20 meters deeper. Around 5 minutes later, the flood waters reached an alluvial fan 10.6 kilometers downstream, allowing for congested sediment being carried to spread out in the shape of a fan. In only 10 seconds, more than 20,000 trees were toppled there. As the flood water and sediment entered the Southgate River, it flowed to the west. At 7.05 a.m., the flood waters reached a logging camp where 15 work vehicles had been parked, wiping all of them out. Large amounts of sediment subsequently entered the Butte Inlet, which turned a light grayish color. Despite the extent of the damage which occurred, as 4 square kilometers of forest had been wiped out, a million dollars worth of vehicles and 70,000 trees, thankfully no one was killed. This can be owed in part to the time of the year and time of day the disaster struck before work hours began. And yet, despite creating a seismic signal that was picked up by seismometers around the globe, no one actually knew where the landslide occurred at first. There were no witnesses of the event and no one heard the sound the slide created with one of the closest settlements located several mountains and 75 kilometers to the southwest. It took two weeks for the landslide source to be finally identified and analyzed. So, why did this landslide occur? Just like Alaska's most recent mega tsunami, which began in Tan Fjord, a retreating glacier was to blame. Since thorough record keeping and mapping of this glacier began, it has been consistently retreating. Whereas in 1985, the glacier was here, by 2019 it had retreated 2100 meters back. And since then, the glacier has retreated even further to a significant extent, retreating beyond the incredibly steep glacially carved wall which would later collapse. This wall is inherently structurally unstable and was previously held up in part by the glacier. With the glacier gone on a section of the wall, there was no longer a sufficient mass to hold up the cliff, so it slowly began to slide at a few decimeters a year. It simply took until 2020 for it to catastrophically collapse at once. I would not recommend visiting this location anytime soon to see the damage this 2020 landslide caused firsthand. For one, there is another, albeit smaller, landslide scar in the landscape which is undated just south of the 2020 slide. However, although this is merely circumstantial evidence, I suggest that this older slide occurred sometime in the past 400 years as given by the suspiciously low height of trees just beyond the end of Elliott Lake, suggesting that they are younger growth which grew upon a similar debris deposit. As a final note, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.